Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters in Christ in the waters of baptism, Maureen died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. O God, in whom sinners find joy, find mercy, and the saints find joy, we pray to you for our sister Maureen, whose body we honor with Christian burial, that she may be delivered from the bonds of death. Admit her to the joyful company of your saints, and raise her on the last day to rejoice in your presence forever. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever, amen. Please be seated as I invite and Katie to come and have the first reading. Reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. I, Daniel, mourn, and I heard this word of the Lord. At that time there shall rise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. There'll be a time of unsurpassed in distress, since nations began until that time. At that time your people shall escape, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake. Some shall live forever. Some shall be in everlasting horror and disgrace. The wise shall shine brightly in the splendor of the firmament, and those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
our second reading proclaimed by Claire. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, but that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is, unse what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it, and whoever hates his life in this world but preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be seated. My dear brothers and my dear sisters in Christ, we live in uh, an age of liberalization. And among the things that we're very liberal with respect is what's appropriate, what's fitting, what's becoming, what is worthy. And in a time where I grew up, there was a standard for propriety. But in today's world, each man is a voice, our law unto himself, a voice he hears, but only his own he hears, to set what is appropriate what is fitting, what is becoming. But while it may be the case for the world, it is not the case for God. When he does his business, it's about fittingness, it's about appropriateness, it's about what's becoming, it's about what is worthy. It is what is perfect and what is excellent. And if I may say, today is a fitting day. Our opening prayers always set the tone for our celebration. And the opening prayer today, we honor Maureen with Christian burial. Not just any burial, but the qualifying term is a Christian burial, which sets it apart from every other burial. What makes it also fitting today is the feast we celebrated. We're feast celebrating the Feast of St. Lawrence. And in as much as the sign or the priestly office exists to remind God's priestly people, people, that they have a priestly character, 
the office of deacon remind them of one of our great duties and responsibility, the matter of charity and the matter and an important branch of that, hospitality. And in looking at the biographical outline in the, orbit, in the obituary for Maureen, what was the phrase? Hospitality was legendary. Charity, one of the great character of God's people. As I said yesterday at the vigil, one of my great sadness and lament as a Catholic and a priest is we tend to forget that faith is about a character. Faith is about the character of the person. And anyone of faith who is a faith, set them to whatever task, and they'll be perfect at it. They'll apply themselves with great diligence, apply themselves with great fidelity to it. And as a consequence, to be a person of faith is no menial thing. To be a person of faith a great character, and such is the woman we knew, and such is the woman who would remember, and such is the woman who we celebrate. And on this day when we celebrate the Feast of St. Lawrence, Lawrence, the importance of charity, of kindness, and goodness, and showing hospitality today, today is the day that is so fitting and appropriate to honor her with Christian burial. One of the great beauty when it comes down to the matter of our faith is I don't know why people worship, but we're all called to give a reason for why we do and live as we live as Catholics and believe. For anyone who believes that God calls them to blind faith, it is unworthy of God because God would not call us to such an existence. It is not worthy of him, not becoming of him. And if we find ourselves following God blindly, then the responsibility is ours, not his. Among my favorite readings come from the book of the prophet Isaiah, where he reminds us, come, let us sit and reason, and let's set things right. And in a moment like this, this hour, it's about setting things right. Because as today's gospel layout, this is not just about honoring Maureen with a Christian burial, but it's also about the glory of God. Charity, when it's done, what gives it its excellence and gives us its virtue is the principle from which it's done, what motivates it, and the end to which it's done. And when faith and when charity is done from the principle of faith, of kindness and love, then that charity is clothed with virtue and excellence. When it's done for the good of humanity and the glory of God, it is done, it is clothed with great honor and great excellence. And if there's one thing that we can and grasp of our love for Maureen and her character as someone known for hospitality and charity, we cannot separate it from her being a person of faith. Her faith was important to her. It's what guided her, shaped her, and molded her into the person that we loved, the person that we respected, and the person that we're here to honor. We cannot separate her from her faith. And among the great things that faith does, and one of the great things that faith does in whatever duty that we call, what a mom she was. In meeting her children, you should be able to see and should see, my, what an excellent task, what an excellent job she did in shaping and molding them. I was impressed, and I have to say, I am impressed. Because as I often say to Catholics, whenever anyone meets you, and they meet you, they should walk and leave impressed because there is no people on the side of heaven who is called to works of kindness, of charity, and work of goodness as Catholics are called to, and therefore impressed we should be. In one of his great, beautiful commentary on motherhood, 
Washington Irving reminds us that our moms are our truest friends. Because when trials thick and sudden fall upon us, when friends desert us, when adversity gives, when prosperity gives way to adversity, when trouble things around us, our moms cling to us and endeavor by their precepts and their counsel to dissipate the dark clouds that come into our lives and to bring peace back to our souls. That's what she was to you. And now we're in this dark place, as it were. Death, what do we do now? In one of the things that I've learned teaching my students is we have all kinds of phrases and expressions. And whenever death is mentioned, they have a phrase, a very popular phrase today, it's dark. But in God's house, death is not darkness. Death is light. He will shine light in darkness and will come forth. As I said yesterday, while death in man's hands is an instrument of misery, of war, of conflict, God will use death as an instrument of salvation by which we are called to be comforted. And it is not just about Maureen. It's about us all who needs now to be comforted. Because part of the great wealth of this world lies not in money. Great wealth lies in character. And the world today, at her death, impoverished. The kindness and hospitality, that gentleness that the world so desperately need, and that light in one sense seemed to be snuffed out. And in that respect, we could say we've been impoverished, but not so fast. What she has done and her death has done is summoned us into this place and remind us in reality what life should be all about. It's not about possessions because life is more than just about possessions. Life, if it is to be lived, when we live it, a man's greatest wealth is going to be his character. And in a moment like this, what we're reminded of, knowing that death comes for us all, what commends us to God and will always commend us, is not our wealth, not our positions, not our stations in life at all, but God will find pleasing and acceptable. He will find it our character. And of all the words that we could coin on this side of heaven, one of the most beautiful words ever coined found in today's second reading, grace. And your mom was gracious. Where grace abounds, graciousness abound. And she was gracious in words, gracious in life, gracious in conduct, and that is our greatest wealth, and that becomes now your possession. And so in one sense, while the world may have lost and become impoverished by her loss, but nevertheless, what you and I are called here and to remind us, as death will remind us, our greatest possession is our character. And where character, where character thrives, the world is a better place. The world is a gracious place. The world is a kind place. And the world is enriched. And you and I are called to draw from her example of hospitality and kindness. And as today's first reading reminds us, all the world is full of distress. It's a time of great distress. And what Maureen was to you and I, what she was to the world, is what God, Christ reminded us in the gospel, the salt of the earth. And the importance of that, salt preserves things from corruption and preserves it. And you, as family and friends, 
you could do and honor her memory as we honor her burial today by honoring her memory and remind us of what kindness and hospitality, our great character as a Christian people, they will know us by our love. Christians are known by her love, and that's the way she lived her life. And you two and I are called to make sure that having been summoned at this moment, summoned at this moment, remember what made her Marine was the kindness, the gentleness, the love of our soul. And as a consequence, we too draw life from this Mass because it's not just about honoring her, but it's about honoring her memory. And her memory deserve that honor. And so may we draw forth that inspiration that drove her to be that woman, that woman known for her kindness, her hospitality, and her graciousness. And may that grace enrich us all, and it enriches us all, enriches the world. And once again, bring peace to your soul, to my soul, and be the light that she was. And may her soul, to the mercy of God, Rest in peace. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, intercedes for his church, and confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join now our prayers to his. And after these petitions, please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Maureen received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead over the waters of death, we pray to the Lord. Our sister Maureen was washed, now is nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet, we pray to the Lord. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son, we pray to the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone, we pray to the Lord. The family and friends of Maureen seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief, we pray to the Lord. We assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Maureen, strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives are purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. And please be seated and prepare the sacred altar for the holy sacrifice of the Mass.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice of your hands and the praise and the glory of his name, according to the role of the Holy Church. O Lord, be near, we pray, to your servant Maureen, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may by your love and gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed not ended. And when the earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and a drink from it for this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, 
Timothy, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Maureen, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Grace us to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <laughs> Say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now, Holy Mother Church. Vice of sons and daughters are Catholics and fully prepared to approach the altar to receive communion.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Maureen may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And before the final commendation to Frank and to uh, David and Kathleen and Kevin and Jeffrey and all the friends and relations of Maureen on behalf of Father Rasser and the people of this parish, I extend to you our deepest condolences and the passing of Maureen. Uh, among my most sacred duty and all priests' sacred duty, uh, as God lays it out in sacred scripture, he lays out the duty of the priest. And one of his most important uh, duty that he lays before them, he reminds them to comfort. He says, comfort my people, give them comfort. And among the reason for which my admiration and love for God is beyond bounds is because when he gives you something to do, he makes sure that he gives you all that you need to take care of it. And in this matter of comforting, there is no time when we need it than at this moment. And God so appropriately lays down the words. And so fittingly, the places where he does some of his wonderful works in shedding light on the evil of death is in the Book of Wisdom, in the wisdom books. You read it and realize that truly he does create. He allows light to shine in our darkness. And in laying out death, he reminds us, and the words I will give to you for your comfort, he reminds us in the Book of Wisdom, I did not make this. This is never what I intended. Of all the saddest commentary on the human condition that you and I know and we're called to as Catholics to make the subject of our prayerful thoughts of our hearts is no good deed goes unpunished. And God says, I know it very well. I gave man and I brought him and I gave him the gift of life. And rather than bring me gratitude and be thankful for it, what he brought instead is death. He brought it and he likes it. He makes a covenant with it. But nevertheless, my creative intent still stands. Life was what I intended and life is what I'm going to bring about. And it's what makes our Catholic faith, the faith in which Maureen lived and moved and did her business, such a great gift that it is to remind us as Catholics that God is faithful. And of all the characters that we could exhibit and recall to exhibit on this side of heaven, we must be faithful. It is a wonderful and beautiful character. And for those who believe it is a horrible thing to be faithful to be a person of faith, the shame is not on us, but it's a shame on those who see faithfulness as some sort of disease. And to have it, to be faithful, it's some sort of disease, but it is our great gift. And I know on this matter of journey that if I had my choice between those who accompany me on the journey of life, the rich, the powerful, and the faithful, I would say, give me a faithful friend, and I'll take that seven days a week and twice on Sundays who cares about wealth and power. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Maureen, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Maureen again and enjoy her friendship. And although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom, and therefore let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ.
into your hands, Father of mercies. We commend our sister Maureen in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will arrive with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessing bestowed on Maureen in this life. There are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you, with our sister forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Maureen, may the angels lead into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Peace. Let us take our sister to her place of rest. Thank you. 